technology all set up? Yep. Okay. We're off. Okay, great. Okay. So I'd like to uh, thank everybody for coming today. So this is going to be our first of our feedback sessions. Uh, if this is successful, then we will do future successions future sessions on a Sunday when the competition is on a Saturday. So potentially the WO open will be the next one. Uh, if people enjoy this session, and we'll get a couple of the female judges involved in that case. The two distinguished guests that we have today is Stephen Fulbrook, who's come over from South Australia to judge today and present. And we've got Gerard Daly. Thank you. Yes. Gerard Daly, who is um, a, a local dance sport representative. Both of them have been distinguished competitors in their own right and distinguished coaches. So we're very got a wealth of information to share with us. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I'll hand you over. Okay. I think right. Derek's talking first. Derek's going to talk first. Yep, Stephen, I'm up to Stephen and I've had a little chat with how we present everything today. I've got the easy part because Stephen's a lot younger, so he's going to do all the fancy bits and show you how to use the body. But I look at it from this way first, that what is dancing? Dancing is simply movement to music. It's a nice simple description. And then I say, you move in what? relate to dancing. The feet possibly, yes, of course. But dancing from a point of view of the judges particularly, and therefore most importantly yourselves, is about how you use and how you feel the music. I've used the word feel, and Stephen will help you with that very soon in the ways you can actually feel. Sorry, I'm in the right place, am I? Okay. <laughs> Stephen will help you with ways in which you can use the body to show that you feel the music. Now, those sort of things are as easy as this. When the, I, was a, I still am a bit of a dance teacher, but we concentrated first on where you put your feet. Pretty simple. Right foot here, left foot here, close the right foot there, good. And then we learn that you're going to try and put it with the music in the temperature of slows and quicks. That helped a bit. We learned where you're going to direct yourself around the floor so you didn't bump into anybody. It's an elementary way of going about things. All of those things were very much a part of learning to dance. But then the next step is the hard one. And that's the, way, the, the one that, where you might try to feel what that music is doing for you. Now feel, we'll come back to that in a minute. But if you think about it, how broad is the challenge for <coughs> all of us, with any level of ability, to do a cha-cha, to do a tango, to do the smoothness of a foxtrot, the swing of a waltz, the zoom, 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 stuff bits of the rumba and all those nice sort of things, they're all different. For goodness sake, how, who can make this easy? Well, the way to try and do that is to listen to the music and try and absorb it into you, into the way you express that particular music. And can I just finish this first part by saying, do we really listen to the music? Or, coming back to the dance side, do we simply try to do what our da jolly dance teacher told us to do? Put forward, I do so. Yes, I do that. But that's not the answer. That's the point I'd like to try and get across for you. The answer is what you feel in here as the relationship to the music. And we can all do that. We can all do that. It doesn't need any real special ability. That's the point I think we can use ourselves. Because if you do tape it on, if you do listen to the music, it creates some sort of reaction from you. And if you do it then from here, and use that to express all the different moves and moods, two slightly different words, in the music, then you can, give, you can develop a wonderful, self-satisfying performance. So, now that's the thoughts I'm trying to encourage for you. Feel what your music is giving to you. Listen to what your teacher told you, yes, of course, but try and apply that to what suits you and the way you present the dance. And that's something I thought we can, with, with the, Wonderful advantage of yesterday. Great to watch you or, or, or what you were doing, but I think there's that bit more to challenge you for, and it's a challenge. That's what dance teachers do. What do you think, Stephen? I think you're on the money. <laughs> well, you're and, sure, and sure um, yeah. I, I had some specific things I wanted to talk to you all about. Uh, that might be whether you're in a chair or whether you're able to uh, connect with the floor with your feet, um, but. When I was thinking about this today, I looked at the judging criteria that Judy and Daryl had given given us, and the four components that you're very much aware of is musicality, 
choreography, athleticism, and fitness and strength and all those things that go with that, and then presentation. And I want to touch on all of those things. Now, and, and I'm trying to present it in a way that it's not just about whether you're in a chair or whether you're connecting with your feet on the ground. I'd like to give something for each of you that would hopefully help from what we saw yesterday. Mm. So we'll start with musicality, which is what Derek's really saying about really what makes us uh, dancers rather than people walking down the street. All right, so musicality uh, is what? Yes, it's beats, beats to the uh, music, as in beats to the bar of music, like waltzes one, two, three. But that doesn't give us really any expression. I can do one, two, three. One, two, three. And you're all saying, crikey, that's boring, <laughs> right? Because there's a component to dancing which I'd like to help you with or talk to you about is rhythm. So we're talking about waltz, for example. What's the, what's the most important beat in waltz, do you think? You could say all of them, really. There's an importance about one, and two, and three. But what, when we look at the character of waltz, let's say, it's one movement to the side two, but what we're seeing is three, two and three, right? The two and is where we're accentuating the beat. So when we're doing waltz, we don't just want to be walking and stepping and turning, and we actually want to show some expression from that. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. So you can see there's other things than my legs being used. I'm using my sides, my hips, my shoulders. But at the same time, we don't want to be using parts of our body that are the wrong parts. So I'm going to talk a little bit about musicality, but we're going to get into presentation and how best we can hold our body. So the first thing is I'd like you all getting up, and if you could do it with me too, <laughs> online there. We just want to, and we're just going to do a natural close change. I'm going to do that into a square. So I don't mind which foot you start on, but if you're a lady, we can start, come out from the, out from the, Cheers. there a bit. And we're going to just do a back basic. One, two, and three. So we're on our toes, but we're also bringing our feet together. Now for you, Heidi, isn't it? Yeah, Heidi? What I want you to do, and what I Amanda. Name? Amanda, that's right. What I want you to think about in that is your side of your body, okay? In this particular instance, we're going backwards. We want to think of moving the waltz and stretching our left side. So I want you to do that with me. I want you to step to the side and I want you to swing your arm up and stretch your side. Okay, just give that position. Let's just try that side step. One, two, and three together. Don't care if you're up and down yet, but we'll talk about rise and fall in a minute. So let's do that again. We're gonna do not worrying about arms, except I want to see the arms help your side to stretch up to the side. One, two, and three. Because from there, you notice we're still shaped. We're going to do another backward step, this time on our left foot. We're going to, or moving backwards in our chair, we're going, and we're still stretched our left side, we're going to now step back and step to the side two and stretch our right side. Okay? So can you see that's showing some expression, isn't it? We're showing not just steps, because that's boring, isn't it? Yeah? We're gonna show, show some activity through our side of our body that's going to go one, two, and three, one, two, and three. All right, let's do all that again. So I'm gonna face you this time. You're gonna do the same thing. How about you, Heidi, are you okay doing that? Yeah, that's what I, I hope you do, yeah. Feel that you're getting that stretching feeling. And then the two. Deborah's yeah. also online. 
Who is? Deborah Kizik, she's also on Hi, there. Deborah. Okay, so we're going to do those two, what we call closed changes, but when we go to the side, we're going to accentuate to end, and we're going to stretch out, firstly, your left side of your body going backwards, and then our right side, okay? Do that? Okay, here we go. One, two, and three. Big stretch. So I put some deodorant on, I've been giving a squirt there. <laughs> yeah. Now keep there. We're going to come back now and we're going to go one, two, and three. All right? So there's a little bit more going on. So I just want you to think about that. I don't want you to do it to the point where you're off balance. Balance is the most important thing. We want balance on all our dances and when we're looking at you and critiquing you, we want to see that you're balanced or at least showing a good posture through your body. <laughs> Which brings me to the next thing. Who did Palmer Waltz yesterday, by the way? Mm. Did Palmer Waltz? Mm. Yeah, oh, right. no, no. That wasn't Palmer Waltz? But when I first learned Palmer Waltz, oh dear, I was only... What's that? Deborah did it. Did you did? Yes, Deborah did it. Yes, she did. Okay. I don't know about you, but when I did Palmer Walsh, those four walks forward in shadow position, they seemed like they went all day. I could never get it slow enough. But because, and a little bit what Derek and I saw yesterday, is that when we take a step forward, it's not just a step forward like we're walking down the street. We're actually going to wipe our foot through onto the step, okay? We're going to toe, ball, flap, heel. We're gonna wipe our foot through, right? So that occupies the time. So we're wanting to create shapes perhaps, whatever we're doing, but we want to wipe our feet through because I don't know about you, but my dance shoes cost me a bit of money. It cost me what? 150 bucks or 200 bucks? I don't know what they are now. I need new ones. Um, but I was only getting $50 worth out of it because I was just going, oh, heel, toe. I was only using part of my foot. Okay? So I want you to feel that you're balanced. I don't mind which foot you're standing on, but I want you to feel that you're holding one foot back and it's on its toe like that. And I want you to feel that you're wiping the ball of the foot through and the flat of the foot, and then your heel comes to the foot, uh, onto the the ground and then you can move on to it. That's the very first step we learn in our theory is how to move mm. forward. We actually don't start from this position, we actually start from this position here and it's so that we can get that wiping action, okay? Now if you're having trouble with that, it probably means you're a little bit straight, your legs are a little bit straight. So we can flex our knees when we dance. <laughs> We're allowed to flex, right? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you do? Yes, I was a dancer, yeah. You were a ballet dancer. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. all right. Some really great things about ballet dancers, but some of the things we have to change, and that's one of them, getting that wiping feeling. So what we're going to do is we're going to... So I want you to simulate that too, even though it's in a chair. You're going to feel that rhythm come through. All right? All right, Heidi, good? Yeah? All you guys good? I want you to, if you're in a chair, that's fine. I want you to feel that you're, in your mind, spending the time coming through with that, if you like, even the wheel. Cruising through. Cruising through. And I'm no expert at all. I'm learning from you guys when it comes to chairs. So I'm very much happy for you to teach me. But when we're dancing and using our feet, and we'll get to other things after as well for everybody, but. I want you to have your foot back on, on the toe on the floor, the other one's flexed in the knee, and you're going to wipe, 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 move. Wipe, 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 move. And, and I want you to get a bit of depth coming through here. Wipe, 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 move. So by the time you've taken that third step, look where I am, I'm quite flexed, aren't I, through my knee? You are. <laughs> Let's try it again here, one more time. Left toe back, flex the knee, and wiping, walk. Wiping, walk. 
wiping walk, feeling the whole part of the foot wiping through. Difficult? Yes. It's just walking forward, isn't it? But yes, that's the top of feeling we want to get that kind of rhythm going. All right. Now, this is for everybody now, people in chairs or not in chairs, it doesn't matter. Posture, I think, Derek, would you agree head position was an issue yeah. in some cases? Very much so. Yes. Not to get on the spine. Uh, yeah. And this is about performance, isn't it? What I love about you guys is the joy of dancing. You made me inspired yesterday. You all made me inspired and wanted because I saw your love of dancing. Some of the other competitors, I wish I could put that into them when I was going home and teach. Because I could see, I could see the joy happening. So you've got to show that joy off. You've actually got to, hey, look at me. This is what dancing's about. Look at me. Yeah, but look like you don't actually. Say again? You have to look like that that the audience can. Absolutely. Yeah. So we were sitting down yesterday, so but even when I'm judging, even we all dance it out, can't you? Mm -hmm. You can because we walk around like. Yeah, so I want you to think about how good you are because you're well, dancers. Well, well, okay, you guys are dancers, so we should look like it. So what I want you to do is feel like somebody's holding you at the ears here, and you're. I want you to flex your knees, and I want you to feel. Derek, would you come behind me and hold? Just hold my ears, just like. So <laughs> if you held mine. <laughs> no, not, just underneath me, that's right. So I don't want to see you guys doing this. That's not performing. That, but this is performing. But notice how I'm not. I look tall, but I'm flexing my knees. I want you to all try that. So, get your carer, get your mum, get your Derek, get whoever to hold you. From there. Don't oh, pull wow. your head back. Give us member. That's good. Good. I can see a neck. <laughs> Look at your long neck. Good. Look at that. Your long neck. Mm -hmm. Look yeah. at your long neck. Yeah. Beautiful. <gasps> Look at that. Yeah. Right. Hands down. Let me put that. Relax. 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 That's good. Excellent. Look at that long neck. <laughs> Oh, you all, all got long necks. You don't have to strain it. It's not something that needs to be strained. See if I can grab your neck. <laughs> Damn, I couldn't get it. But I want you to think that your head is being hung by a hook. And when, okay, where do we put our weight? We hang it down our back. So Derek's going to push me well, on the back here. I heard just before I do. Uh, an expression right. I heard from a teacher in England and related to this subject, and you just used a hook, which scared me a bit. But he <laughs> said, um, pretend you've got a helium balloon up there yeah, that's good connected like to that. the top of your head. So that, that creates exactly what Stephen's talking about. So it's just another way of thinking about it. The helium Sorry, balloon is probably nicer than, 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 than a hook. <laughs> better than a hook. I want yeah. you to feel that down the back of your spot, there's like a waterfall. The weight's falling down your spine. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. sure. A bit better, isn't it? Yeah. So that when we walk around or dance, or even sit in the chair, or sit in the chair, yeah. let me see, Heidi. Look at that. You've got a neck. <laughs> and Deborah, let's have a look. We've all got necks. We're all looking like we're presenting ourselves properly. That's really good. <laughs> Good for posture. Exactly right. I quite agree. So, yeah, oh, I'm sure we all do. So, when we're talking about that, we can have a little bit of feeling that our back is falling like a waterfall, but what does that make the front of your body feel like? We should be feeling that our tummy muscles are tucked in underneath our ribs. Up, I would, you, this is my word, upnessness. <laughs> um, this is incorrect for them. Grandma? Not bad. Uh, Derek, take yeah. over any time because I'm talking too much. <laughs> but, um, but there's an opposite, isn't there? When we're standing that way, we've got our weight hanging down our back, but our up to our diaphragm or our ribcage, 
we're feeling that we're picked up. We're toning our bodies here. And I think, correct me, and tell me if I'm wrong, but you, can you feel that? Can you be able to do that? That feeling of down, feeling hanging down your back? And then feeling that you've got some tone here? That will help your posture maintain itself. Derek. The part I'll talk to you. that. It's something that I enjoyed matching the two comments together, Stephen's and mine. But <coughs> excuse me, to the waltz. And Stephen went through the pattern and so on. And when you think about the waltz and the technique, it's a down on beat one, rising on two and up on three. Now, why? That's, a, that's pretty much, with a few excuses, exclusions, what the theory book says. But it's what the music says, isn't it? Now, if we were to go further with that point, and depending on how much time we've got, but that's the thing I was trying to get at first, is what is the music telling you, and how do you express it within yourself? Now, come back to that waltz for a minute. Are you happy that the, the music, did you understand? Does one, two, three. Stephen was just showing you beautifully. One, two, three. But why? Not because Stephen says so, or me, or anybody else. Because the music does it. And that's what I would like you to really, you know, there's probably not as many more things that you could do in this television age than go home, sit down, and listen to some dance music. Whatever you like. Tango, cha cha, rumba, everything. Macarena. This, <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about movement for music, and that's what dance gets. Yeah. Macarena is pretty jolly good. Well, but that sort of gets off the level. Yeah. Well, the Yes, that's right. Yeah, that one too. Yeah, yeah all of you, all of them. And they were good. Yeah. But look, that's the difference. Were you doing the Macarena or Little Bit? And learnt all those moves because somebody else said that's what they are? Did yes. you feel it with the music? Yeah, yeah, um, we got taught those things. Got taught those things, so yes. But then yes. you take it on your own character. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you yeah. see, that's, that's it. See what Stephen just did? Yeah, so that's the difference yeah, I'm trying to help you with or get you to recognise. The music says this, the dance teacher says that too, because it goes together. But can you get a little bit more out of it? And why should you try? Because it's what the music says. That's a bit, right? That's the interruption I wanted to make. That's right. But the waltz was the classic example of what you were doing, and that's because the music does. Right. Um, when we, we'll just go to Latin for a moment. Um, when we're doing the cha cha cha, um, the music's pretty quick, right? We've got to try and get those three quick actions on cha 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 or four and one to be working at the speed of the music. That's difficult sometimes. But what I think will help you get that side together side action is when you do that, what's the prominent beat in cha-cha? Silence. Anybody online? What's the rule? So it goes two, three, four, and one, doesn't it? That's the real strong beat. So if we go, whatever we're doing, two, three, four, and one, that's the important beat. Two, three, four, and one. Two, three, four, and one. That's what we we're wanting to get from it. So talking about musicality, that beat is the one that we want. Side together, hit, if you like. All right? Okay. I've got one more thing that I want to say about the holes, either in chairs or partnering. And then I've got something for the partners too. Um, where is it? There it is. <laughs> and we talked about this before, didn't we? The holes about our posture, and I don't know, but I can appreciate the difficulty and complexity when you're in a chair to dance with some bloke like me standing up here. You've got to try and create a ballroom, let's, we're talking about ballroom or nouveau, shape. But I, and I saw how you held the hands differently, which was great. And Peter gave me some insights about how to get turns happening. That was good. But I think the principle of how we relate our shoulders and arms would be the same for whoever. And that's when we put our arms up, and I have this with my pupils all the time at home and wherever, they come to grab their partner, particularly guys, 
guys, we tend to kind of grab our partners and put them onto our balance point. Whereas what we should be doing is feeling that we're settling this weight down the back with our nice long necks and giving our arms to our partner, whether it be the man or the lady. It so doesn't matter. So here I am. Here I am. So can you see how hopefully my shoulders weren't coming up when I put my arms up? We want to see that your shoulders are settled when we're looking at you because musical expression and all these other things we've mentioned are really important. But what's also, when we're looking at lots of you on the floor, we're looking at two things very almost instantaneously. That's your shape and your movement. Your posture is included in that. And then of course your musicality is enhanced with your, or related to your music, or so your movement. So if, if you're looking down, or if you've got tight shoulders, that's not going to make your performance as good as what it would, could be. So what I'd like you to do is to do a little exercise, and I'll notice this, some of the Latin people were doing this, is roll your shoulders up and around and down. Up and around and down. Up and around and down. We were talking about this too, weren't we, Dad? Yeah, you did. So, and then when you bring your arms up, it's almost a continuation of that you bring your arms up into dance hole and connect with your partner. Same for the men. I don't mind which step you stand on to gather you as a partnership, but you swing your arms up and under, and hopefully you can see that my arms are looking clean, but they're not tight or stiff. They're in a relaxed but wide position. If I'm the lady, the same. Right? You shouldn't be aware of somebody of your shoulders. That's what I'm trying to get through. Last thing for me, and then Derek should say something because I just talked to him. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> when I notice, um, and I appreciate the complexity with people in chairs, it must be very, you know, it's harder work because you've not got the, you've got a partner that you've got to hang on to. That's, that's probably the biggest problem, is the partner. <laughs> <laughs> but when you, when you dance and have a free hand and you're making an arm movement, chair or no chair, I'd like you to feel that the, it's not just an arm movement. It's actually coming from four parts. Body, and there can be a bit of rotation and stretch with your body. Shoulder, settled but widening. Elbow, wrist. Right? Let's put all those together. Let's all try it. Don't mind which arm you use. But let's bring our, oh okay, let's use our left shoulder. Bring the shoulder and body forward. Bring the arm up into a curve. Don't take the hand out, take the body and then the shoulder, then make the elbow move, then the wrist. And if you're real tricky and artistic, do a little curl on it as well, right? Don't worry, Peter, you can still make that look masculine, <laughs> right? You can make it look strong as, as a man, or sorry, as a, a lead, sorry I said the wrong terminology, as a lead or as a follow artistic because it's actually the follow people that are more important all right so let's try that one more time body forward shoulder coming with it arm comes up use the body elbow shoulder elbow arm curl okay well done Derek I think. well look yeah I just bring this in just watching you, and I was wondering if you pick up on it. Almost everyone, as I saw it, everything that Stephen did, but it's something first. It's almost what it was. Oh, you did everything he showed you. I stood up and said, good. But in everything he did, he started down here on the floor with his feet, he bent his knees. Now, in a wheelchair, 
when I offer the thought that you can do that from the base, sitting your bottom, of course an expression isn't it, into the chair and work from there to do what Stephen said. Uh, but, but the point is where it starts. See, if you don't, you can be a little bit like me. Uh, <laughs> six foot nothing, gawky, skinny, eh, or well, I can do all those things. Well, good. That's not very good. Well, it didn't look like Stephen, but I did what he said. And I lacked a heck of a lot, didn't I? Because I didn't use the floor and I didn't use my body to, to work from a base. Working from a base. Yeah, I was just so, so that's the part. key thing <laughs> that I saw. Can and I from what Stephen was showing you, that I thought needs emphasis. Okay. You've got a base to work from. Use that base, whatever it is. And those expressions that Stephen showed can then have some value. So just just with the wheelchairs, the equivalent of that is creating a gap between the back of the chair and the base of the chair. So being able to sit forward and to create the base. So if you're dumped in a chair, you have to curve your body and create the gap. So this is the most important part for posture in a chair. I need to be able to put something between the back of my chair and my back. What I just said matched to what you just said. Yes, it does. So, so being able to ground yourself in the base of the chair, ground yourself in the base of the chair, but then breathe your body forward and up. You see where that comes so from? Slight forward movement. Is yes. That what you're saying, Peter? Yes. Well, you've got to create the gap. Because yeah. I notice when you, um, Derek, um, bend your knees. If you bend your knees, if you put your feet together and bend your knees. Your back goes forward. Your your actual your yeah. this part of your yeah. body actually yeah. goes forward. Amanda's doing it beautifully right now. Yes, and Amanda's doing exactly that. Yes, yeah. wonderful. So it is to create I'm the sure gap. You are too <laughs> create the gap <laughs> for me, Amanda. There you go. Look at that. Yeah. So we're learning from you. Mm. Back, we're learning from you, and this is really valuable. And that's how it should be. It should be collaboration. Mm. Absolutely. So thank you. Because I've got to take this back to Adelaide and try and teach this. It's just, need your help. just from the chair point of view, yeah. it's, it, you're actually doing the same movement standing, but we don't normally talk about it from our bottom. Right. But you're actually doing the same movement. Right, right. Right? Because it's happening from that. Yes. Point. So like you, like you just did then, your spine moved mm -hmm. when you did that. Yeah. It didn't yeah. stay in the same spot. Yeah, no, that's, it. that's a good point. Yeah. So you just have to change emphasis from where the ground is in a chair, and it's right. the same. So that, that's the starting point. Correct. Right. So if I wanted to be grounded on a, on a, um, you can take a video of me. If I want to be grounded in a chair, I'm not, I'm not, um, to be here, this, to be here, it's the same thing. If I want to roll back, create extension, I need to move my spine, my chest and my spine comes as equivalent as if I bend my knees, yeah. I still do the same movement with my hips. I did notice that the competitors doing that yesterday. Right. That was really good. So it's the same, except their emphasis is not on the bottom of our feet. It's actually on the bottom of our bottom, yeah? Um, so, yeah. I don't know whether you want to say anything more, but I'd really like to hear from others if you have questions. That's what I thought, too. Exactly that. We've, we've said enough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other, oh, I've talked too much. Uh, I thought just share as a group, not questions just yet. Just watch your opinion. You can sit down there. Uh, and what the different musics are to you. What do you say? What do you hear? Let's hear it. Oh, so, anybody? First go. What do you hear in a. You've got all the dancers to choose from a palm or waltz, even. Cha cha, tango. What do you like? Yeah, perhaps. What do you hear? Because if you. If, um, I'm trying to not pin it on you too hard, but if you don't hear the difference between cha chas and tangos and so on, you can't perform it. You actually can't. You'll do what the teacher says, yeah, but I've already said that's. That's very well. But this is about you enjoying your movement to music. The very thing I started off feeling it. Enjoy your movement to music. So what does the music mean to you? Anybody want to have a go? What's a cha-cha? Stephen showed you actually already. Oh. Um, you can feel the rhythm in the music as you go. Like, you're going along to the music. Yeah? What yeah. do you feel? Well, I don't want this to sound like putting anybody on the line, but that's the point I'm getting at. Does it what make you, do how, you how does it make you feel? Does it yeah. make you feel good? Does it make you feel happy? 
It makes me feel good and happy as I go to the rhythm. Yeah, yeah. see, so you're even doing it now. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, you see. Exactly. Yeah. Now, but, but on the same point, so watching what you did so beautifully, mm. would that be good for a cha-cha? No. No, you see? It's That's what rumba. I want you to start to think about. Yeah, rumba. Yeah, that's right. um, Excellent. And they recognise yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Now, Chacha's I saw one young lady, mm. that's that's a, a magnificent yeah. waltz last yesterday. I just wish the able-bodied people could see. <laughs> it had a beautiful flow up to beat three. I'm, I'm digressing, but she, to me, felt what that music was about. It was a joy to watch, which you don't see very often mm. on the big guy like stuff. You mean the, 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 the girl that had a hair on yeah, she's actually a world champion. That's why. <laughs> but the thing is that for me, well, I, said she's a champion. Well, I, I think you all champion. offered <laughs> you all offered me something that I would like to put back into dance yeah. sport back in Adelaide. That's what I think. But some questions, maybe. Yeah. Anything more on this? You see, that was a good so, example. You so on that would not do for cha cha cha. No. So that's what I want to hear from you. Otherwise, I'd be a little bit worried, like teachers often are. Did anything of what we've been talking about sink in? <laughs> we have got some questions prepared oh, um, lovely. for when, which we could maybe start to get yeah. people's <laughs> idea as to what sort that of things good. we could be asking. I, yeah. No, I, I, would, I would like to pick up on the the feeling bit and just ask Amanda. You're on the spot. <laughs> what the difference? What the difference between the feeling of a cha cha mm -hmm. and a rumba is? So what, I, what do we talk about when we say cha-cha? What feeling are you supposed to be expressing? I'll give you a hint. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like you're doing the mime. It's cheeky, right? Cheeky, yeah. Right? So cha-cha's cheeky, mm -hmm. right? But rumbo is what? Serious. No. <laughs> well, it can be, I suppose. Yeah, no, no, that's good. That's Was that seriously hiding? Was that hiding? <laughs> What is rumba? Where was it? Who said that? Well, oh, Heidi. <laughs> so rumba is the dance of love, right? So you're supposed to feel the emotions that you feel when you're in love with someone. I do it, I have to close my eyes and pretend it's some other guy. Well, that's performance. <laughs> So Debbie and I have mentioned when we've gone out to the cha cha, it's like we're at a good disco. Yeah. Like we're out there to have fun and get into yeah. the rhythm. Cheeky, and, and be cheeky yeah, with each other. That's what I was on Friday night. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and just, just as a part, I'm not taking the show over you two, but another, it's another, sure. yeah, I know. <laughs> but another, another really top athlete in Blackpool talked about this as a lecture he went, and he applied colours to the dance. So sometimes we have colours as an emotion. So. What colour would you apply a rumba or a cha-cha or a tango, right? Red. red. Tango is red, right? Rumba? Oh, yellow, it's caution. <laughs> <laughs> Blue. <laughs> but, but you might, for a cha-cha, in your mind, think of orange because it's a cheeky little colour, right? Yeah. Or yellow, maybe. But Did blue is... Orange, yeah. But so these are different ways we can actually put... Like water. Well, it's blue to me, right? Yeah. It's a blue. smooth blue. Um, oh, so you have to match your outfit for the... Well, you, if you're thinking that way, that's a really good idea. But yeah, so there's lots of different ways of thinking about how you feel about your dancing, right? And everyone's different, aren't they, Mr Gatley? Yes, definitely. So what questions did you have for us? I've just, I've just lost the Zoom session. So no. Whoopsie. So, does anybody have some comments on how they felt they went yesterday? What something that strikes them? What you thought about your performance yesterday? You've already forgotten I mean, about say it. Say things like, "Gee, my partner was just hopeless." Or, <laughs> um, um, poor Chris is not here to defend himself. Either, so, um, tell me your thoughts. What, what did you enjoy about it? Yours was exciting, so you because felt. Because I did my dancing very exciting yesterday. Everyone was very excited to see mine. I noticed that actually. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. That. I, I thought. I that know was... all the faces changed. <laughs> yes, yes, that's good. Yeah, so um, that's that's the whole reason why we do it, isn't it? Because it feels great. Yeah. Yeah, and and we're really lucky because we experience that. 
And yeah, you can go and cheer at the football or whatever, but it's not the same because it doesn't get you in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah football does, but yeah. not the same <laughs> way. You know, it's from the heart, isn't it? Really, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. It makes you me, feel it. Like makes me feel really happy inside me yesterday. Perfect, perfect yeah. answer. Yeah. But I've got another answer if you want to answer it. Please do. Please do. Where's that piece of paper, Carol? Oh. What, what, does, an, what does an didgeridoo made out of? Ah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. That was yesterday name? morning. That was its real name. What's its real name? What's its real name? What's its real name? What's its real name? Now, I, had, I wrote that down. Oh, oh, oh. oh um, um, it's, it's called... Oh. <laughs> I can tell you because I wrote it down. It's a Yudaki. That's right. Well, they usually call it a Kylie. That's a, a, a white yeah. Australia's uh, name because it sounded more of a red That's what he was saying. Yeah. yeah. He said it was a what? A Yudaki. A Yudaki. Yeah. So that's the actual. And it was 1962 when Australians gave it the name. Yeah. Oh, wow. He was really interesting. Wasn't yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's awesome. He played the Yudaki very well. Yeah. And um, I also learned. Um, Is that right? Yes. Yeah, and you have to get it um, permission from our. Right. Yeah. Just. I don't know. Do you want to start? Do you mind starting the questions for us that we okay. have prepared? Yep. Yeah. We have some questions. Could you wait <laughs> not to do? Could you not do Deborah Kizich's okay. and Deborah and Danny's until they're back online? Okay. Okay, so we had people who just, the ones that couldn't actually come today have That's given us question. some questions. So this question is from Chris Wood and he asks, how do you judge between someone who has good balance and movement and someone who has restricted movement, movement and balance due to their disability? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Off on the floor at the same time. Yes. So just read those the, his words out again. So how do you judge between someone who has good balance and movement and someone who has restricted movement and balance due to their disability? Okay, so you take the restriction off the playing field. You don't even consider that. And then you look at both those people without, let's say, um, if it's a restrictive movement, Sorry, then it's restricted yeah. movement, it's not yeah, even there. So you're looking at musicality, uh, presentation, we lost the posture, all these things we're talking about. Yeah. Um, partnering, choreography. Um, we're looking at um, timing. Um, so, yes, to be, to be equal, we have to actually just disregard that and, and balance what that person can do and then compare what they do do with the person that okay. hasn't got that restriction. Yes. Okay. That's the only fair way. Oh, Derek? Yeah, I, I do have a difficulty with that as a judge, quite simply. I think if I went put on one thing, I'll, I'll come back to what I've been talking about today, what I can see with their musicality, their musical expression, what I can see from that. But having said that, I'm not that convinced it's the answer for you all because the disability, we don't know that. We can see it, but we don't know the degree of which you may be disadvantaged for whatever reason. We don't have that information. We can see things, yes, but there's more to it than that. So quite frankly, I just admire what you do. But sometimes you can't see the person's disability. That's correct. Yeah. You don't see it? No. You don't yeah. see someone's well, okay. So therefore, what is the thing that might be the, the, the one even com a common denominator is the right word I want. So having categories... It's the musicality, that's it. Having the correct category that person's dancing in, so to make a, an even playing field. So, uh, yes, <laughs> I, I think they need to be... We don't have it though, do we? We don't no, have enough. not yet. I've watched some people that, and they are so in such a difficult situation, but they're on the jolly floor with mm. a lot of you guys. Yeah. Mm. It's not a fair comparison. Do it once it just it. is not. And, uh, and, and, and well, the Olympic movement has gone to that. We see uh, my only example is the swimming, where they have all of these different grades. And they have eight swimmers in the pool, and you can have eight first places. Mm. You can do that because of the eight different categories of disability. We don't have that yet. So we're making a We judgment. never know. We might have it somewhere, and hopefully we will have it in the future. It's just a fair go for all of you. 
and you're starting that off. You are, not us. And I think having a point score too is the point scoring system rather than doing yeah. a direct yeah. comparison. Yeah. We're scoring you for your performance, your musicality, your choreography, your presentation, yeah. your uh, athleticism, which is the categories that we're uh, adjudicating you on. So we're giving you a point. And I think that helps with that uh, answer as well, is that we're looking at you as a performer and giving you a rating rather than saying, oh, I'm comparing you to you. That's right. So, so uh, because I'm still involved in administration at Danceport, but I've put a challenge for guys like Daryl particularly, uh, and Peter, because you're in the administration level, maybe we should push our judging criteria or system into what Stephen has just defined for you, we used it yesterday, instead of one, two, three, four, five. We, I hate that, and most of the people that I share the experience with hate it too. I'd much rather like marked a lot of you first. And, and <laughs> there are organisations that do do the Quite honestly, scoring. Yeah. That's, that's not being kind to anybody, that's, that's it. So maybe somewhere in the future, it would be a good idea when we have, we'll use the term disability events, uh, just generally, um, that we mark it differently. And we'll still get a first place, but the access will be on a different thing. So if I've learned something more from today, that's a very good point. I think, I think you guys are setting the pace. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. next I'd like to say that um, I think that they all should get a participation certificate yes. if they don't come first, second or third. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I think that's how we feel, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We being the judging people, people in general. Yes, I really but do some say some of those that. ones haven't even done it. They've got um, a medal. But I think the good thing about uh, for us doing on the Saturday yesterday was that we actually were able to comment and score mm -hmm. everyone. You know, there was nobody, uh, we just knew first, second, third. Yes, they did give prizes out for that, but everybody got a certificate with some comments on it and a score. And that, that's, that's participation, that, that's important. That's great, thank you. Danny is online and she, Danny has got a couple of questions here. Yep. And her first question is, do the judges consider holding a strong top line important for paradances? A strong top line? What? Posture. Yeah, just show. Yes, I, I do. I think um, their ability to be, and Peter explained a little bit about how a slight change in kind of thought process, but yes, we're. I, I, whether it be man or lady, I would still like to see the rudiments of a good top line mm -hmm. uh, with the appropriate strength applied to the correct muscles of the upper body with the relaxation of the other ones and the connections to their partner, even though it be slightly different, and I've learned that since I've been here, it being a slightly different connection, but I would still like to see that clean, wide, extended swan-like top line for the lady and clean line conscious for the man. Yep. A, a next question goes further to the... Don't, don't that forget, thing. as I see it, a lot of people can't even do that. They cannot do that. So what are we going to judge on? So I'll come back and say it again. Use your camera. Yes, okay. Mm. Uh, Daddy's next question goes further to what you were just talking about then, Stephen, and she asks what... A, What's the correct top line and the head position that the judges are looking for in para dancers who are doing standing? Okay. Um, I think it doesn't matter who it is, quite frankly. I think the head position should be, and we've talked a little bit about that earlier, where how we should kind of deport our head. But when I teach a couple for the first time, I charge for the lesson, but I give them a little, I give them a little uh, freebie, I call it, and I call it the window. Mm. So, for example, the lady's window is between where my watch is and my elbow. When she comes into position, whether it's sitting or standing, I don't care, she should be looking out the window. I call it like the little old-fashioned dunny windows that were between your wristwatch and your elbow. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. So you're looking out there, so your head is not square, it's not twisted, it's actually creating the same curve of the 
spine, which should be slightly curving, slightly to the left, but with the head rotation that complements that slight rotation, it's looking out that window. For the man, it's slightly, it's slightly different because their posture, even though it's on the left side, it's looking just out to the, the inside of the left hand. So they're not here, they're not there, they're actually there. And if you look, if you put those two together, you'd actually see a creation of curve from the couple. So there's the lady, there's the man, and between them, they've got that openness without tension that creates what we call a connected top line. I was going to say, if you want to be a big boy, then you can be girl and we'll show you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, people say, how come you do the girl so well? I said, I was at my partner's, same lessons as my partner. Yeah. Right? And she told me off, off if I did it wrong anyway. But yes, well, <laughs> I mean, for want of a, a, a decent lady, Derek will be the man and I'll try lady. and do my best lady. But to show at least the creation of curve um, that we're talking about. Which footy for me? Would you rotate around so we can see different angles? That's it. Lovely, thank you. So bend your knees. Always leaving me. Look at that. He's very graceful, isn't he? She is, isn't she? Whoop! What's your name? Hello, Joe. Thank you, Eric. They're good questions. I love them. So does the dancing of the partner make a difference in the, the marking that the dancer actually gets? And should should we have the top dancers partner us? Mm. That is a really good question. Mm. 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 Look, I can't say it doesn't make a difference. Uh, if you've got a really good guy, and I was going to make a mention of men who were partnering, particularly ladies in chairs. Uh, I noticed this a little bit when I was here and also at the competition, but it can't not have a difference. If somebody, look, if, if, if your partner is not keeping you in time, <laughs> or if they've kind of, I, I use this expression quite a lot with my couples that I teach, your shape looks a little bit like a busted sand shoe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right. so we don't want that. Um, that can't but help make a difference. They don't have to be the top world champion, but they need to keep you in time. They need to be able to show you that you can be balanced, whichever, whether you're sitting in a chair or not. Um, so, because we're looking at those rudiments of dancing. Mm. Yeah. No, I totally agree. You, you can't ignore the partner, no. no matter how good he or she is. Yeah. I do have a, may I make, before you ask any more questions, I did have one more comment, and it was mainly for the partners of the people in chairs that I noticed when they were doing foxtrot particularly and you were moving backwards and this might be my, my ignorance I'm quite happy to for me to be not understanding what you're trying to do with with a backward and the, the lady or coming forward but I noticed that when you were moving in the shape of chairs your weight was actually see how my weight's falling backwards and whether you're uh, using your feet or whether you're in a chair, it doesn't matter, your weight should be when you're moving backwards forward. Mm. So that when you're moving, your movement should be extending. So you're measuring your back. So I hope you don't mind me saying that, Peter, but I did notice that with you, but others as well. Oh, Julie tells me that as well. <laughs> so Correct. when you're moving it was. forwards, you're trying to create your body movement going forwards, but when you're moving backwards, you still want your body weight forward. There is there is no excuse. I don't care whether you're in a wheelchair or not, or no. or a wheelchair is in front of you or behind you. There is no excuse. And that, I bow to your knowledge on that, but uh, yes, as you as a partner or any gentleman as a partner partnering a lady in a wheelchair, I still want you. To, I would like to think that your dancing would still be at the best level it could be, mm. and that you would be able to <laughs> extend your feet backwards and move correctly. 
That's all I want to say. So I, I, think, I think the comment that you're making there is that, yes, partners do make a difference. Um, my comment, and Daryl, I'm sure you'll back me up on that, is that we don't have the opportunity always to have our number one dancers, so you end up with 65-year-olds sometimes. Hey, that's my age. <laughs> 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 well, <sorry. laughs> we have, exactly. Uh, these two, and they do different age groups, put them in the same category because they're just as well and they always ring gold. So if you put them all the ones that are good into the same category and so that they can that would be have another, an another mm. yeah, that but they will be able to um, see if they could compete against mm -hmm. each other and how they do. Could I, put a, could I put something forward that I feel in the larger competitions only, not in our smaller competitions, but the Night of Stars and the WA Opens, I think we've got a, um, enough entries now that we could have a, like a beginners and an intermediate. Uh, it would be something that Dance Sport would need to score our marks accordingly so we could rate people. But I do think with what you're saying, Rachel, that we do actually, in those bigger events, we could separate people into someone who's new and someone who's been competing for a while. Some type but of grading. I don't think it's set up through dance sport yet to get those marks. Some type of grading. Yeah, some sort of grading. Yeah. 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 Great idea. Great idea, Deb. Yeah. 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 Can I, um, Great idea. I noticed, I noticed when we come... Sorry, I'll, 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 I'll yeah. just, we'll, do, we'll just finish this, the answer for this one, then we'll, we'll get to your question, Deb. Okay? Yes. I noticed when we come on the floor, why do they have to mention that we've got a disability? We're normal people. They don't have to mention that we've got a disability because the, um, you say they're um, master one, master two, and then we go on the floor. They I don't would, have to mention it. I would have to agree with you totally. Yeah, that's the general. I've been told all my life I've got one, and like you go to a workplace and they treat you different. This treat us like we're normal people. This, I agree. We're not aliens. I, I, I would we're just have to 100% agree with you. So, yeah, and we've. And so the fact people with disabilities half the time they've got better memories than most of <laughs> True. And I think I've got told by my brother. But yeah, um, for me coming um, into <laughs> this side of dance sport, uh, that's something that I need to learn. Mm. No, but you don't know that. So Rachel, do you, <laughs> not, do you not like the term all abilities? I, 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 yeah, all abilities is right, but sometimes when you come on the floor, um, big competitions go, oh, here's come, it's a disability. People. I did notice on yeah, the television over here, so I kind of get home after this terrible, long day of judging artists, mm -hmm. and I threw on the television and it had something about WA's, it, it wasn't about the Special Olympics, but it had disability and they splashed dis. Mm. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was just saying, whoosh, out. Ability, but because that's what we're judging yeah, all of you on your and ability. That's why we say all abilities. So but yeah, ask the people everybody. with disabilities what they were like. Don't take their rights away from them. Yeah, ask exactly. them. Yeah. Not yeah, it's not up to the carers. It's not ask them. Ask these young girls what they want. Yeah. That is happening. Great. I totally agree. And that's something that I'll take back I to agree. South Australia, uh, where uh, we're trying to set a system up that you've got here, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. There's a question that's got to come out of that. So how, I mean, you just, I just heard this thing that won't work with the WA Open, and the reason for that is quite simple. Uh, we already can't fit in what we're trying to fit in. And you can't mentor, do that quick. Uh, Judy Williams was speaking to me a couple of hours ago with a problem, she can't fit it all in. So whilst we would like to do those other things with the different categories and so on, at the moment on the two major events it won't work. The answer to that is, develop your own major event because you're worth it. That's aside from that. But what do you want? Look, let's use the term. And I've, I have had to learn that we've got a lot to learn from organisers' point of view of what the people want. Mm -hmm. So what do we want? Now, for example, let's use the word masters. That's an age group category. It's a foxtrot. <laughs> it's, well, what, what do you want it to be called? Is it, if I leave it at that, then well, Peter Egerty's going to get up and dance. Yeah, but well, when, you, when you've got other people coming on the floor, they don't even mention anything. They just say, oh, yeah. Master One's Master Two. Sure. This all put us on the same category. Just let us all go for it. But sometimes 
you might have people with disabilities that might need a bit of help, but um, you might have to figure that one out. That's up to you. Yeah, well, I, am, um, <laughs> really, I really love to hear the categories that I'm seeing when I've come over here is all abilities, mm -hmm. uh, para dance. Yeah. Um, I think the para dance is already. That's pretty easy, yeah. I would never be able to and, do yeah, the easy. other one is the hearing or sight. The, we, we call it vision impaired. Vision impaired, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, I, I mean, for me, it's just knowing what category, like masters, you know, I don't want to be an old bugger either, but, you know, I'm happy to be called masters three, you know, or... Uh, Soon to be four. You know, I, I'm only 16 I'm, <laughs> or 15, I'm happy to be called your know, junior. You know, it's just a category. Yes, so, and, and may I... But it should be respectful category. So may, may I say the category sport is all sports uh, attempt to put people of equal ability. If you're a junior cricket or you're um, a uh, masters uh, swimmer, they attempt to put people in the categories, yes. right? So it's if you don't have enough people for the category, then the people who are slightly less or slightly disadvantaged just need to try harder and get better for themselves, right? So in the category they're in. And hopefully they'll bring along their mates and they'll bring more mates along and soon enough we'll have enough people to create the category specific to that, um, that competition. So it becomes fairer. So in dance sport we are trying to make the categories fair for everyone but we just don't have enough numbers yet. So okay. that's an excuse but that's actually the truth and guess what you guys are doing you guys are actually helping us create that energy create that um, wealth for everyone should have an opportunity of playing sport whether you've got a disability or not in Australia and that you guys are demonstrating that so you are the ambassadors yeah yes an ad an ad Don't you think we can change that for like special dance or something in the WA Open or something? I mean, they call me a master. Yeah, I'm but that's how you masters. define master. Yeah. Masters. Um, in, I used to do martial no, arts. Mm. <laughs> I used to do martial arts. And a master was somebody considered yeah. extremely high. Oh. Mm. So don't, don't be too hard on ourselves no. mm. or yeah, labels. It, 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 as long as it's respectful, mm. um, Master is, or whatever, it, it's just giving us a, a group to compete against each other. Sort of like it's, it's, basically, yeah, basically. Yeah, it's basically about time. At the moment, we don't, there isn't enough people. We mm. don't have, haven't had the time to build it. Because those other people don't have the, um, they don't have the confidence. Yeah, but it. it's just a matter of exposure and stuff like that. And once that starts, um, the more it's, it's the same with any disability. There wasn't a lot of dis um, exposure many years ago on certain disabilities, mm. and now there is. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's becoming quite predominant. And all um, the strong certain, sports, if you look at them, have a section that yes. is part of all abilities or exactly. para or yes. all the all the ones who have it's embraced that in has become those sports yeah. have become very strong. Yeah, and exactly right. We but I, need you guys. Mm. Be ambassadors. And make dance sports strong. Mm. I didn't have that when I was younger. I didn't have a thing with disabilities. I was doing ballet, but I was doing ballet mm. with the able kids, but they didn't let me do all the concerts. But I did. I didn't do exams, but I did everything when everyone asked did I go when I chose. I did all the um, so concerts. Yeah. And they didn't say, oh, that girl over there has got a disability. Um, Just let me. Right. Think, we, we and no one asked, questioned me. Yeah. Which, okay. In pointing out the disabilities, though, it's kind of like saying, hey, look what we can achieve, even yeah. though we might be sight yeah. impaired it's or have, have a problem with... Mm. Uh, Celebrate it. It's, it's about, it's it's about, about saying, hey, look what we can yeah. achieve. Yeah. Mm. Um, we but we still be appreciated. Yeah, we yeah. still have to get... Okay, get we've ready. got one more question. Oh, actually, we've got 30... Could we do... Could we do would everyone mind if we did 15 minutes time out? Yeah. Because we've had quite a lot of information there. Um, we might just log you off from Zoom and we might all have a break here. Have something to eat, a cup of tea, 
chill out, and then we'll come back on again. Yeah, good idea. Okay, so we just had a recharge okay. rather than, than going on beyond the hour. Okay, that's okay? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Okay, so guys, we're going to um, 